you can see we've now added in this frame. Now you can take any of the frames from the collection, but what I've done, I haven't completed the rest of the side because oh. I think this is quite a nice design here. So what we're gonna do now is we position this in place like so, and then we can add in the frame. Oh. Or as Jane's done, you may decide that you want to go for the larger panels, okay? So you would position that and then you could continue it. So it's all about having a look at what you want to, to go with, okay? So I thought what we'd have a look at now is this shadow, boss, shadow embossing technique, okay? So um, Lynn's very kindly traced this out using the number three tool, and you can see she's already started to add some white work behind it, or shadow embossing, okay? Now, this is where you need to sort of take your time definitely practice before trying out the technique and what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the soft side of the mat okay so we're going to work on the back of the parchment still okay and then so it's nice and not too squidgy but this is one that comes in the starter kit okay i'm going to put my glasses on for this and i'm going to take my groovy guard to concentrate on one area now often when we're doing white work for example, if I take this one here, just so we can practice on, just to show. Okay, so this is traced with the number one. This is traced with the number three. Now, if we wanted to, to do white work, then we build it up in layers, okay? Some people will do flick away from themselves. Some people prefer to flick towards them. There's no right or wrong. It's what you feel more comfortable, comfortable with. Yeah. So, for example, I'm going to turn this upside down. And let me just show you something. So when you're working with a large ball tool, for example, where you've got this line, mm -hmm. okay, I automatically thought that the back of the ball tool had to sit on the inside of that line. So that when you... Sh I'm going on heavy on this so you can see on the, on the camera. But can you see I've now got a gap oh, between yeah. that line? So the idea is that the centre of the ball sits on that line and then you flick out mm. okay so what you're doing is you're not creating that oh yeah gap in between no you see that definitely okay. see that. so if i go on this one here and let's just have a look at this one so what we're going to do now i'm using the largest ball tool and i'm just going to gently stroke mm -hmm. away so do you prefer to stroke away i prefer to stroke away rather than towards me okay and i'm using and i'm just very gently just moving away from myself Okay, and I'm always starting on that white line. Right. Okay. So, so you're just effectively just feathering that. Feathering yeah, that it's tip. just like um, you. It's, it's like so. This line on my finger here. I've shown you so many times. The line on my finger is the line on the parchment. Yeah. And what we're doing is, as we're moving away, we're taking off or uh, we're striking a match. So it's like an aeroplane. Nice. So what happens? Rather than get a solid line, yeah. which would then be irregular you're creating like a feathery effect, okay? And what you would do, you would do all your one layer of white work and then you would let it rest, mm. preferably overnight. Well, I suppose if you're doing it first thing in the morning, you can go back to it in the evening. Mm -hmm. But the longer you leave it in between building up the layers, the whiter it will become when you apply the next layer. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to do this little one here just to sh show. And I'm going on a little bit heavier than I would normally for the first layer. And it is, it is a good practice, good habits to get into with parchment. Mm. Let it rest because I fully understand the impulse to want to get it done and go through and try, and try and speed things along. But parchment, if you do let it rest, the results get even better and better. Absolutely. And when I first started doing parchment craft with the, the groovy system, I wanted it white instantly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's another good way of getting fluffy sheep as well, because if you go on too fast and too quick, yeah. it creates like a cotton wool effect. Oh, okay. So you could do that on your, on your little sheep as well, but you just need to be careful you don't go through no. um, your parchment. So now if I turn this over, you can see which one looks more natural, the one without a solid line or the one with the solid line. Yeah, definitely with that. Okay, yeah. so it gives it more of that natural sort of yeah. shape, makes the flower look mm. more real. 
So if I now go back to one that um, Lynn's kindly prepared for me, so it's already got a base of white down, okay? And then all we're gonna do now is we're just gonna, can you see how it's going whiter? Lynn would have done this probably about two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. She's probably shouting at the TV saying, no, Lynn did it last week. <laughs> okay. And we're just gonna gently, and what we're doing is we're following the lines. Right. Okay. And you'll notice that I'm not going all the way down to the tip no. of that flower. And so that, is that the key here? You don't want to go all the way to the yeah, tip? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the sort of like the, the technique, but you just want to sort of, you want to give it sort of some light and shade. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll notice that I'm sort of turning into the shape of the petal. Okay. So this is using number three. So again, depending on the, the environment you're working in with the light, you may find that maybe you need to go with the number two tool to trace out your design. I, I always love learning new skills. And I have to say, there's something very appealing watching you work here and taking that time. Just have a play with these designs. Yeah. Learn that, that, that pressure, that feathering, because that's only going to serve you throughout your whole crafting life. Absolutely. And when we look at what um, Linda's done here, you can really see, and I, you haven't got feely vision at home, but if you could feel that, it's very sort of natural. Feely vision. Which someone should have meant it. <laughs> feely vision. Can you imagine all these hands yeah, coming through the screen? <laughs> <laughs> um, so then what you're going to do then, yeah. and you'll notice that I'm leaving gaps. I'm yeah. not doing the whole petal, yeah. because what I'm doing now is just creating sort of like the light and shade so and this is where it comes into the the shadow embossing because you're creating the natural that. shadows now I, I i can appreciate your comment when you're saying yeah you could do this with a bit of practice so with definitely with shadow embossing it's a bit of practice but worth it and this is such a lovely lovely design to practice on yeah see and then what you can do as you as you go through and then you slowly move down on the, the size of the ball tools, but then you just concentrate. You don't go all the way down where you've just been because you want the tops to be a little bit more whiter. How um, how long would you let the parchment rest for? Really, for, for this sort of thing, you would let it, so you would do all of your, your undercoat first and then come back to it the following day. So 24 hours? 24, yeah. Okay. Because what happens is, what you're doing, because parchment is it, fibers, mm -hmm. Um, and what you're doing is you're stretching those fibres. Yeah. So if you leave it for 24 hours, the fibres are sort of bouncing back so that they're sort of relaxed, but then they're coming back. And then you go back in again, and it's sort of, it's that process. Yeah. It's true, Marcus in my ear, uh, director saying that that's his rest time in between sets in the gym. So 24, 24 hours. hours. One set, I'm done, come back tomorrow. Because he wants to let the fibres in his stomach rest. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is you're just going to slowly, but you can see it's sort of starting to come together now. Okay. So when we turn it over, you're starting to build up. You see where you've got oh, the, the shadow. It's, it is already. starting. And I'm going a lot faster together, yeah. than, I mean, obviously Linda would have spent at least a week putting that together. Wow. She would have got, obviously be doing other projects in between. Mm but to build up those layers. Would you say that's the key to parchment, is have a few projects on the go, so you're not yeah, tempted to overdo it. So yeah. imagine you do a bit here, go on to another one, do a bit, so you've always got something to do. Something to do, absolutely. Yeah. And as I say, the, the longer you leave it, the more whiter it yeah. will become. Beautiful. And it's easier to work on. Mm. I mean, Lynn has very kindly uh, sort of done this for me, so if I just explain it, oh, no, turn this, this over, let's do it on that way. Yep. So you can see what um, she's done. Um, traced it out with the, the groovy number one tool, the groovy number two tool. Yeah. Then this is the Pergamano one and a half mil tool. Wow. Yeah. Um, then number four, and then she started to add in the levels of whiteness to it. So you can see to get to this stage, it's one, two, three, four, five, six layers of white work. Wow. To get that effect. So that would be six days? Six days. Wow. Yeah. Do you know, I've never seen 
it done in the stages. various different stages. That's and, excellent. Yeah, and it's really good because so you start off there, yeah. and then tomorrow you come back, and when you put the next layer on, it looks like that. And you come back the following day, and you do that. So you can see how it gradually progresses to build up. That's fantastic. Okay. And for that, you use the various different size ball tools as well, because the smaller, right, so when you're doing like this fine area here, mm. you would probably use the one mil ball tool. Oh, okay. Um, because you just want to pick up certain areas. Mm. Okay, so it's all about, I mean, that's if you want to do this, you could just trace these out in say the number two, and then apply color on the back. Yeah. Okay. So you would still get, rather than the bright white, you would get a softer look, or even the number three, and colouring it on the back. Mm. I mean, Linda's often done a technique where you just use a normal pencil and you colour in, and you get lovely sort of greys and blacks yeah. and, and everything. And it, it's, it's a stunning effect. But in order to do that, you would probably go for the number two or the number three to do that. I've learned, you know, the, just the two hours today, mm. I've learned so much from you when we've done already so many shows over the years, but to still be discovering new techniques is fascinating. Yeah, and it's always, and it's really good. It's always a learning curve, even for me, and I've been doing it for many years, mm. but it's when, it's, I learn, tend to learn a lot when I'm doing my Groovy Tuesday episodes and I get the interaction of people watching. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of the trad parchers would say, oh, back in the day we used to do that, and you think, Oh, that's a good that's idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. And so the ideas are still current from all those years ago, yeah. um, from the dorsing techniques, um, using the crayons and taking the blending pen to the crayon. Um, and this is where groovy. So groovy is not detracting from traditional parchment art. But what no. it does do is make it so much more accessible. Because look, a prime example, we've got a march apart, a master parchment. I cannot say this. Uh, a mar <laughs> master parcher uh, <laughs> in the form of Linda Williams, who has embraced the groovy system and really showcased how you can merge very traditional techniques with a system that suddenly it's it's a level it levels a playing field. It is and. As I say, everything that I've done on the previous show and I've done it on all of the groovy shows that I do, yeah. you don't have to do this if you yeah. don't want. So don't think, oh, there's no way I'd ever be able to do that. You don't have to. I'm not going to say, well, you've got to do it if you're buying the boat. You've got to do this. You've yeah. got to do that. It's all about sort of giving you the confidence to be able to learn the skills. You've got eight minutes. Probably. Eight minutes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So but what we do then... So another sort of top tip what you can do, if I go back to that piece of artwork, mm -hmm. where's that gone? The one I was doing, it's hiding. The, the groovy gremlins always yeah, come out to play during the groove show. Okay. So you can see how we're starting to build that up. And we also sort of covered this in the, the earlier show as well, when we did the snowdrops and the dotted design. So working on the back, you can take a white pencil. That's a good technique. Okay. And what it does, so if you're, you're not so confident with your various different layers of white work, if you put a very sort of rough, like an undercoat down, what's called grey work there, then you can take your pencil, okay, and you can intensify that colour as well. Okay. Now on the back, you can see it looks really, really grainy. And again, I'm creating those areas. So this is also, if, let me just go all, over all of it, for example, on that one mm -hmm. petal, okay. And then I'm gonna take my um, Dorso Oil, which comes in the uh, Pergamano Accessories Kit. And I'm going to take uh, my blending pen, which are back in stock after two years. Thank nice. you to Mr. Dave. For, getting that all sorted. So just to explain the backstory behind that, so obviously Clarity bought Pergamano and it yeah. was a match made in heaven, especially with the groovy system. But then the issue was that Perg Pergamano was based in Holland. It was based in and a lot had of all the tools were manufactured. All, I mean, big machinery. Yeah. Getting it A into the UK and then finding... We had, first of all, we had Brexit. Yeah. Then we had COVID. Um, and then we had to find somewhere in the UK that could operate the machinery. Yeah. So it took many, many years, and by that time we started to run out of a lot of the tools. So Dave's worked hours, months, trying to get everything Years. sorted. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
Um, and now, so some of the tools we've had out of stock for a while will gradually start so, to be I mean, re This is a really big deal, and you know the quality that you get with Pergamano. So if you do want to go for your blending tool, uh, it also comes with the refill nibs as well. £9.44 back in stock. I know there were so many groovy fans who were delighted to see this back in stock. 523-331, your item number. Because back in the day, um, it would be like a paper stump yeah. that you would use. And then the manufacturer of those papers, which was Ranger, decided to discontinue them. So all of a sudden, the parcels were going, oh, what are we going to use? So this is where Barb came up with the idea of the blending nibs. And then obviously we needed a holder. Oh. So what we're doing now is we're gradually just building up the whiteness in the back. Okay. So, so now so you're talking about grey. What was it, grey? So grey work, work, which is where you've done one sort of base coat of um, embossing with the mm. number four tool and now you're just intensifying it with a white pencil okay but now what we want to do is to, if I turn that over so you can see oh yeah but it looks quite flat doesn't it yeah but you because can definitely see that white there. you can see the white but it looks quite flat it doesn't yeah. look no, no. like that you can't yeah. no know. so then this is where the eraser pencil comes in so you can now start to take out the white pencil. We have got the option with our eraser pen. It also comes with... It comes in the colouring accessories yeah. kit. Yeah. So, so now we can start... So I can take that line out of the middle and then take a brush just to dust off. Just showing you what you get with our colouring essentials kit. So you get the spot on sponges, the dorsal oil, the eraser, the blending uh, mats in there. So it's a great kit to have. Uh, $17.99 your price. Okay, so I let me show you again. So I took out sort of a line in the middle, mm -hmm. okay, but it was a little bit too wide. So now what I can do is I can then go back in with the, the white pencil and just narrow oh, that's nice. that shadow yeah. effect. Okay, so now you can see how it's starting to look a little bit more natural compared to yeah. just being solid white. Wait, now it, it does, doesn't it? That's interesting. So it gives you, So it's all about sort of trying different things. If you yeah. haven't got the confidence yet to try white work, mm -hmm. just try doing a very light undercoat, which yeah. is called grey work. Then take a white pencil and then colour in with the white. And using the eraser, you can then lift out and then add that definition. Perfect. So again, if I look at, for example, the um, snowdrops over here, because these are the crocuses we've been working on. So now... I can just take the white pencil and just, it's the same technique as if I was doing with the ball tool. I'm now just flicking away. Mm -hmm. So when we turn that over, you start to get more whiteness. Yeah. Okay. So trace out on a scrap piece of parchment, just like I did earlier, and then try the different techniques. Maybe you want to give white work a go for the first time. Do it on one of these. Have a go. Learn the pressure that's required. And if you go through it, all you've done is you've gone through a piece of parchment that you're practicing on. It's such a good exercise to do, to learn your craft, to know your skills. So you've got uh, the tool sets in front of you, but knowing the benefit of each one, working away, building up that muscle memory, Great output. Yeah. Really, really good I mean, output. and the, the finished piece that Linda has created, using a combination of the shadow work and the, the normal tracing out mm. of the groovy, is that you can get the same lovely effect doing it all with the number one tool. Now, I know time is on us, so very, very quickly, and fantastic demonstration, Paul. Uh, just going back to our new yeah. and exclusive, what you're getting here, brand new artwork from Linda Williams, and it is artwork.